Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. In this episode, I want to talk about optimizing speaker placement for improved imaging as well as soundstage width and depth. But before I go on, I want to define those terms just a little bit. What I mean by imaging is the localization of sounds in space. And using music as an example, when you play a song, let's say there's a vocal, guitar, cymbals, drums, what have you, you should be able to identify their placements within the sound stage. You should be able to say, oh, the guitar is coming from there, the vocal is coming from there. When we talk about sound stage, we're talking about the left-right spread of the sound stage and also the front-to-back depth of the sound stage. So those sonic images like the voice or guitar could sound like they're coming from close up to you or they could sound like they're coming from very far away or somewhere in between. It's basically a three-dimensional sonic image. So the speaker setup tips that I'm going to give you have to do with optimizing both the imaging as well as the sound stage presentation left to right and front to back. When it comes to optimizing both imaging as well as the soundstage presentation, symmetry is number one. You have to have one speaker there, one speaker there. They both have to be the same distance from your ears. You can't have a speaker over there, another speaker over there, and expect any kind of imaging precision or semblance of soundstage. Symmetry is key. When we're talking about constructing a symmetrical setup like that, we're obviously creating a triangle. Think about it. You have your head, you have this speaker, you have that speaker, back to your head. And for optimum imaging as well as soundstage presentation, at least for me, what I find works the best is an equilateral triangle. The same distance that's between the speakers is the same distance as each speaker to my head. Now the next question obviously is what should the distance be? And that depends a lot on room size. But even in very large rooms, I found no more than nine feet. And I tend to stay between eight and nine feet and no less than seven feet between the speakers. And when I say between the speakers, I actually mean center to center on the speaker. That's to me the acoustic center of where the sound is coming from. So tweeter to tweeter say. And most often in my room, I use eight or nine feet. So that's eight or nine feet between the tweeters and the same distance to my head at the listening position. With that seven to nine foot equilateral triangle, I find a great balance between imaging precision and overall soundstage presentation. Now, of course, I've tried to put my head closer to the speakers and what I find happens is imaging precision can improve, but the soundstage presentation, particularly the depth, suffers. Likewise, if I pull further back from that equilateral position, I find the soundstage becomes a little more enveloping, but the imaging precision suffers. So for me, that equilateral triangle, it works the best. Now within that equilateral triangle, what also affects imaging precision is the amount of toe-in you give the speakers. In other words, how much you angle them towards the listening position. And why this affects imaging precision is it, in most speakers, directs more high frequency energy directly to the listening position and that helps you localize instruments in space. Now, there are no hard and fast rules on this because the dispersion characteristics of speakers vary widely and you really have to play with toe-in, but I found in general about 10 degrees, just a little bit of toe-in works the best, but sometimes I've towed them right in or even fired them straight out. This speaker, the Bowers & Wilkins 805D4, it has a prominent treble and a lot of toe-in doesn't do them a lot of good. Instead, they're faced just with a moderate amount of toe-in so that they would be crossing behind my ears at the listening position. But again, there are no hard and fast rules about this. It will really vary speaker to speaker. And what I recommend you do with any speaker once you have that equilateral triangle set up is just fire them straight ahead and then slowly move them in and see how the tonal balance changes as well as the imaging precision and find what works best. What I haven't talked about yet but is important are the distances the speakers need to be from the walls around them. Most obviously the side walls but most importantly for me as you'll see in a moment the distance to the wall behind them. Now how I deal with these distances comes within the confines of my equilateral triangle which is almost always seven to nine feet regardless of room size. Even if I could accommodate a 12 or 15 foot triangle, I wouldn't. I wouldn't probably go beyond nine feet. I don't wanna to listen to speakers that are way out to there. I want them right there. 
So let me tell you how I deal with them in my room, which in the listening area is about 16 feet wide by 18 feet long. Let's say I'm setting up an eight foot spread on the speakers. That leaves about four feet to each sidewall and that's ample. And if my room were narrower, I wouldn't sweat it that much because the sidewall reflections, I can deal with a bit with toe in and also acoustical treatment. They aren't of primary importance for me when it comes to optimizing imaging and soundstage depth. But I find what really has a big impact on the sound staging as well as imaging precision is the distance the speakers are from the wall behind them or from the listening position, what we'd call the front wall. And in my room, which I said is roughly 18 feet long in the listening position, I leave a clear seven feet behind the speakers. That only leaves a few feet behind my head. And I found though that that can make the illusion of soundstage depth incredible. In fact, fellow reviewer Diego Estan comes over to my house and is always enamored by the illusion of soundstage depth, it seems to extend not just to the wall behind the speakers, but oftentimes, depending on the recording, well beyond that front wall. That said, there is a downside to pulling speakers that far into the room. The wall behind the speakers and the corners help to boost the bass. It's called room gain. And that can give you a much more fleshed out full bottom end. And pulling the speakers into the room sacrifices that some. But that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make because I really like the stereo illusion of precise imaging as well as soundstage front to back depth. I really like hearing into the recordings and picking out where all the performers are. Now you might be wondering or even have your own ideas why pulling the speakers into the room so far gives that heightened illusion of soundstage depth as well as more imaging precision. I won't pretend to have all the answers, but I'll give you a couple of them. I think that one of the reasons that getting the speakers very far from the wall behind them and reasonably far from the side walls is it reduces the interaction of the speakers with the room. As a result, at the listening position, you get more of the direct sound of the speakers than the speakers and the contribution of the room, the reflections and such. Therefore, you hear more clearly into the recording. And if the recording you're listening to has really good depth captured in it and strong image placement, that simply comes through more clearly because you're hearing the sound right out of the speakers and less about what the room is providing. The other reason I think this speaker placement works so well, at least for me, has to do entirely with the mind. Now, the ideas of sound staging and imaging, they're constructs in our mind. The information is in the recordings. The recording engineers often do a really good job of capturing spatial cues and then they mix to place things here and there. But those things are really taken in and constructed within our brains. And for me, at least, the heightened illusion of depth has a lot to do with how far the speakers are from the wall behind them. For example, I've often listened to speakers that are set up close to the wall behind them or right against the wall behind them. And I've heard recordings that I know have depth captured, soundstage depth. And when I listen in that kind of setup, I really have a tough time imagining that depth when the wall is right there. The wall creates a visual impediment to me imagining that illusion of performers front to back at varying distances. On the other hand, when the speakers are way out into the room, that space is visually created. So when it comes through in the recording, it's not as hard to imagine the performers are at different positions front to back, not just left to right. And then when the depth extends beyond that wall behind the speakers, it's not as hard to imagine because you've already got that sense of depth there. It's just going now a little further. So I think it's from a purely visual perspective that helps the mind reconstruct the illusion of sound staging and imaging, whereas having a wall right there kind of cuts it off. To wrap this up, I want to say I believe there are acoustical as well as psychological benefits with the way I set up speakers to optimize imaging and sound stage presentation. Try it and see if you agree. And in a nutshell, here are the key points. Symmetry is key. Get those speakers equidistant from your ears. Try the equilateral triangle. Like I said, I like seven to nine feet, most often eight feet. Experiment with toe in. 
but mostly get those speakers really far out from the wall behind them, even if it means sacrificing some distance behind your head. See if it optimizes the depth that you can hear in the recordings the way it does for me. Thank you for watching.